I'm Mac, and I've got your back. That's why we're reviewing Helldivers 2, a game that peaked in popularity seven months ago. That's the Jetavision for you, uh, I guess. With a lot of time having passed, there's been a lot going on with the game. From actual controversy, such as forcing you to link your account to the PlayStation Network and balancing issues, to something as asinine as Discord drama involving furries. Hey, we love our internet hissy fits. The dumber, the better. But here at Jetavision, we're all about the game. Games. So if you're looking for information as to why player count's gone down, you won't find it here. In Helldivers 2, the world as we know it has united under a single flag, that of Super Earth. And they've spread wide across the stars, colonizing planets under a single federation, which becomes threatened as it finds itself in a two-front war between the killer robots, known as the Automatons, and the hive-minded swarm, known as the Terminids. To face these threats, players are put into the boots of Helldivers, crashing down into the middle of hostile territory to complete pivotal mission that will turn the tide of the Galactic War. What is the Galactic War, you ask? Well, it's a bit of a narrative device slash gameplay mechanic. Completing missions isn't just a way to level up and earn currency to spend on new gear. Your victories can test control of enemy planets. If enough players complete enough missions, they can, over the course of days or weeks, fully liberate a planet. Your goal, and by extension everyone else's, is to fully liberate each and every planet in the Milky Way. Basically, playing the game contributes to an overall effort to liberate the galaxy. It's a pretty neat way to kind of tell the story. And overall, it's a pretty great way to bring the community together by making it feel like a truly collaborative effort. A novel idea, to be sure, um, how long they can keep the narrative surrounding it fresh and interesting does remain to be seen, but it is a pretty neat thing nevertheless. Now let's talk actual boots-on-the-ground gameplay. Helldivers 2 is a co-op, squad-based, player-versus-environment game. As previously mentioned, you face two factions, each having its own variety of enemies and playstyles. To the west, the automatrons, which are primarily based around ranged combat. Players will need to duck behind cover and take care not to get caught in the open, lest they be subject to a barrage of automaton fire. Troopers are the bulk of generic soldiers that form their ranks, but among the more elite are the commissars who lead them, able to call for reinforcements, striders who tread through the map, scouting for hell divers, heavily armored hulks bombard their opposition, and berserkers with chainsaw hands for a bit of that melee. They even got tanks! and gunships. The Terminids on the Eastern Front make use of their numbers to swarm the player. Helldivers will need to drop as many as fast as they can to keep their distance. Enemies such as Pouncers, Scavengers, and Hunters will overwhelm the player. Bile Spewers can spit acid at you. Heavily armored Chargers come right at you, forcing you to dive out of the way or be trampled. Shriekers take to the skies, swooping down to hack you to death. And Bile Titans tower over the planet, and you'll have to fire everything you've got to bring them down. Both the Automatons and Terminids are quite fun to fight, and the variety means that whether you prefer firefights at range or simply mowing down swarms of endless drones, Helldivers 2 can provide a well-rounded experience. Now, missions can be as straightforward as simply killing a bunch of enemies, but also goes up to destroying hatcheries, reactivating oil production, evacuating civilians, loading up an ICBM launcher, and conducting geological surveys. You know, for democracy. There are also sub-objectives as well, like activating a surface-to-air missile system to shoot down dropships, or taking down illegal broadcasts, or destroying any bug holes or automaton fortifications that your foes can spawn from. These don't have to be completed, but they give you more rewards for doing so. The reason each mission has so much crammed onto them is because the map sizes are actually quite open and sizable, which isn't something you see a lot with these sorts of games. Usually these PvE wave shooters are more linear, or, or kind of like an arena or, or whatever, so it kind of stands out in that regard. While there's usually a considerable distance to traverse between objectives, there's plenty of enemies thrown at you to keep you on your toes, and sub-objectives in between to fill out the map. The planets that the maps themselves take place on are also quite varied, with many in environments to take in and explore, giving each planet a bit of its own identity. Some even have weather effects to spice up the gameplay. With so much to do, it can be easy to become sidetracked, but there is a time limit set in place that, when expires, takes away your ability to use stratagems, special weapons, and calling in reinforcements. It then automatically sends the extraction shuttle down, which forces you to haul ass out of there. This generally keeps players focused, and it prevents missions from going on for too long. Should you find yourself on the back foot or just need some extra firepower, 
power, stratagems can be used to turn the tide. If you lose a hell diver, you can use stratagems to bring in a new one. If you've survived long enough for supplies to be a problem, you can call down a resupply to replenish ammo, grenades, and meds. You can also call down some more specialized weapons, things like light machine guns, heavy sniper rifles, grenade launchers, bazookas, flamethrowers, all that stuff. If you need to hunker down and deploy defensive measures, they can be used to put down things like minefields and machine gun emplacements. You can also call upon a fleet of spaceships in low orbit to bombard the planet, or make use of aircraft for quick airstrikes, both of which are great for softening up or even taking out larger swaths of enemies. And the system they have in place is pretty interesting as well. You have to punch in this select combination of keys. The more powerful the stratagem, the longer the input. And since you can't fight while you're putting in the keys, that means you're left vulnerable. So you'll have to be smart about where and when you punch it in. Small thing, but we dig it. When you finish a mission, you can use your rewards to purchase new stuff. Medals are earned by completing missions. The more objectives you complete in one go, the more you'll get. These can be used to unlock stuff in the war bonds, where you can buy trivial things like emotes or purely cosmetic helmets and capes, or things like armor, which aside from coming in light, medium, and heavy varieties, have unique modifiers, like increasing medical or grenade inventory or increasing throwing range. You can also unlock guns like assault rifles, SMGs, shotguns, snipers, and energy weapons. You'll also earn requisition slips, used to unlock stratagems like special weapons, light machine guns, heavy sniper rifles, bazookas, flamethrowers. During your missions, you can also collect samples, ranging from common to rare to super. And if you can make it to extraction with them in tow, they can be used to purchase upgrades for your ship, which increases the effectiveness of your stratagems. And there's a bit of a grind to it to be sure, but the gameplay loop is honestly fun enough to justify it. And as time goes on, you can really start to craft loadouts tailored to a place style you like most. On automaton missions, we like using sniper rifles for our primary weapon to take enemies out at range, a secondary SMG for close-up firepower, and a big ol' bazooka in case you need that explosive punch. Gameplay is overall really fun. I mean sure, PvE wave shooters are generally pretty hard to screw up, but still mowing down terminids and fending off automatons is just fun and satisfying. With a variety of missions, enemies, weapons, and playstyles alike, it really is a game that keeps you coming back for more. Of course, there's small things we like. We dig the designs of the enemies. Basic automatons resemble Terminators. A lot of Warhammer 40k stuff going on with them as well. The Terminids are obviously the uh, Arachnids from Starship Troopers. A little on the nose, but still some pretty fun designs here. The tidbits of world building, what with the propaganda, in-game broadcasts, and character dialogue, really help build the universe for the player. The rants the Helldivers spout out about the fascistic Terminids when they're bugs that can't even comprehend ideology was probably the funniest thing about it all. It's hilariously absurd, but these guys are so fanatical that logic just doesn't matter, and, and that's just what makes it so fun. And how about that soundtrack? It really captures that cinematic feel. You can totally picture something like this being in an 80s or 90s movie or something. It's worth mentioning that the game does have somewhat of a battle pass. The aforementioned war bonds, which again is used to unlock stuff like armor, guns, emotes, all that stuff. You unlock this with the premium currency called super credits that can be paid for with real money. But you can also find them in game sometimes. And you can also unlock them directly from the war bonds themselves. And since the first war bond is free, you can actually use that initial war bond to pay for other war bonds. To add to that, war bonds don't expire and get replaced with something else, so there's no pressure to unlock everything as fast as possible. Definitely one of the better battle pass models to come of recent years. Now, we're still not big fans of the fact that there are microtransactions. The game's $40, and for us, that's kind of a price where... You know, right, but at the very least, you can unlock everything without paying anything more than the initial price of the game, so... Fair enough. We also noticed that a lot of the guns are just kind of reskins of each other, a few tweaks made here and there, but, but that really just lessens the excitement around getting them, because they just don't feel new, you know? Not a lot I'd say is wrong here, honestly just a few glitches where weird stuff happens, like your character shooting invisible guns and whatnot, quite annoying, but in our experience anyways, we haven't seen anything too bad or game breaking. Helldivers 2, despite being past the peak of its popularity, likely never to return, remains as fun as ever, with a variety of content, unique, 
large, open mission, satisfying combat, and an enjoyable gameplay loop, Helldivers 2 goes a bit above and beyond your typical PvE. And so, Jetavision's score for Helldivers 2 is an 8.5 out of 10. As far as recommendations go, PvE co-op games are pretty easy to get into and cater to gamers all over the gaming spectrum, so we would say it's worth it for most people. While some might question the game's longevity, for the time being it's fluctuating between 10,000 to 30,000 players, so there's definitely still some life left here. So if you're interested, you'd best believe that we'd say, get in that damn hell pod for Super Earth. But that's our review of Helldivers 2. Now, if you're new here, welcome. If you're not, welcome back. You've just watched a video from the Jetavision. If you want to keep up to date with our game and movie reviews, subscribe to the channel, follow the Twitter, and check out the Discord. Mac Cheese to Jetavision, signing out. You all have a good one. We will